Hello, welcome to uh, May 23rd, 2022. I'm Kurt, and this is my daily good life meditation. Uh, something I do each and every morning, um, shortly after waking up, to remind myself of my life objectives and principles, and to see how I did applying these to the last 24 hours, in particular how I slept last night, and to plan for the coming day. First, uh, last night and yesterday, I slept right up until the alarm. Um, and I feel exhausted, and I know why. That's because I um, I stayed up too late last night, and I partied a little too hard. Yeah, I partied hardy. <laughs> uh, Chris is over this weekend. He's still here, and he'll be going back today. And um, uh, we had a great weekend. Um, it was, you know, Saturday in San Diego. Yesterday, Yumiko and I did all of our chores. We had, a, we, had a, we had a fun day. I'd say that was one of the funnest days. It's amazing how much fun you can have just, uh, you know, shopping, you know. And we're not even shopping for anything fun. We're just shopping, just talking and having fun. It was a fine day. Um, and then we got home. I took the dogs for a walk. No real challenges of any sort. Lots of really fascinating, deep conversations with Yumiko, which I really enjoyed. We got really lucky at all the shops we went to, but uh, we got held up at Tanaka, at the uh, soba shop, because uh, their usual long wait to get in, and then long wait for the food. But we knew that going in, and the food was worth it. Mm. And then from there, I need this coffee. I need to kick it in. When I brought, well, after we got home, um, I took the dogs for a walk, and when I got back, Emily and Yumiko were back. They had been in Temecula antiquing and thrift storing, which is the, a hobby that you know Yumiko and I also enjoy. And um, they brought me back a nice a new cup. That's not this one, another one. I got this one on Saturday. <laughs> Quite apt, I think. <laughs> and um, so, but their, their shoes were got interesting and fun. I got back and the family was kicking, cooking in the kitchen, the three of them. I don't really cook. Um, I used to, but I don't really anymore. So. Uh, there wasn't really enough room for the three of us, for four, four of us. So, and I had to keep um, Rudy, who was, he was a bit of a son of a gun sometimes, from uh, attacking both Yumiko and uh, and Chris. So I stayed in the living room and I watched Midnight Diner and had a beer or two. That was the problem. And um, actually, three. I had three beers. I got a little overexcited. Um, and watched Midnight Diner, and then Chris came over and joined me. His 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 work was done, and he and I watched a really good. It was one of the uh, New Year's Eve specials, um, mid end of the season season closures for Midnight Diner. Really good. I really liked it. I think he liked it too. He, he I know he likes the food. Then we had a great dinner, and I I just I I shouldn't. It was also late. I didn't get to bed until like ten o'clock. Normally I go to bed at eight thirty eight forty five. I had three beers, no less. I threw temperance right out the window yesterday. That's the first time I've done that. I've had, like partied like that, so to speak, since <clears throat> since the Japan days. You know, and it was fun and it was worth it. And I'm glad I did it. I woke up. I woke up. Oh, I did wake up in the middle of the night. I woke up dreaming that I'd missed a meeting with the big boss. Which I don't even have on my calendar. Yeah, when I checked my calendar in my dream, sure enough, there it was. You know, the big boss's name. Me, there's the meeting, and I am about an hour over after that. So just a one-on-one. -on -one. Why did my Why does my brain throw those things at me? It's not even a real meeting. It's contriving stuff to worry about and be anxious about over. For no good reason. Other than maybe the old principle of distraction, right? You know, keeping me uh, um, occupied so that I don't have to see the great indifference. That could be it. Oh boy. I thought I was over that. <sighs> Goodness gracious. How did I do on my um, circles? I got a circle yesterday. Did everything video, journal, 
and red. Maybe a bit, or maybe party night, party night. Yeah. Anyway, let's do the good life. Seven objectives and 30 principles. I'm going to do just a lightning round to the best of my ability. I never seem to, even when I deliberately set out to do that, I, I rarely do, but I'm, I am exhausted. Seven objectives as follows. One is to be always ready to die. Two, to make good and effective use of time. Three, to develop and maintain good and sound life principles. Four, to cultivate good emotional reactions. Five, to perform good actions. Six, to recognize true limits and true opportunity. And seven, one thing slow, to, to do one thing at a time and to do that thing slowly and deliberately. Someone uh, that I know in Japan sent me some uh, interesting information about home buying in the uh, area that we're interested in. Very interesting information. That was nice of him to do that. 30 principles. Principle number one is war. To always be fighting against what I think is true and what others propose is true. Two, reason. And this are principles of honesty, objectivity, and doubt which is the frame of mind that I want to uh, develop and maintain in the course of my life. So that I'm being objective and critical and uh, rational and honest. Third principle is homunculus, the suggestion that um, though, I don't, though I don't have a soul, I, the observation that I do have a consciousness, it seems. Unless this is all some sort of a, a big illusion of some sort. <laughs> Even then, there seems to be some sort of a ascension there for myself. Hmm, that's a heavy thought. Next is um, the anchor hold. That's the next principle. Our consciousnesses are stuck inside of our heads, can't get out. They will die with us, and they can never really truly connect with anyone else. And then comes the home of good and evil, right and wrong are subjective opinions that we hold and then uh, the after that comes purpose this is uh, the principle of purpose and my three perp I are one to be a good husband and father namely so that I raise my daughter successfully to adulthood and you know, do my part to get the genes into the next generation to um, to be a virtuous human being um, improving the working to improve the well-being of thinking creatures in particular and then three to share the uh, story and message of my book, Going Alone, where I capture the experience that I had of the, you know, um, basically the five decades of effort that it took me to wind up in the deep desert alone. And then what I apprehended out there, I wrote down the story. And then the resulting uh, objectives and principles that I call the good life that were my answer to going alone. This book is available on Amazon and at uh, my website, goingalone.org. Next is the atomic principle. Everything is uh, just bits and pieces flowing and changing and falling apart and coming back together into new forms. And then the principle of nature. Everything has some particular nature, including me and you and our job or our home and our family and our friends and the rocks and the chair and the house and the sun. Everything has some particular nature, some way of being and doing and existing and changing. And I'm just pointing out that if you, if we observe what that is, if we can note it and then be honest with ourselves about the nature of things and people and us, then we're going to do better. We'll deal with the world in a more real, real, realistic manner. And next comes um, um, maturity. No, the, I always mess this one up. And next comes uh, the pirate ride, the suggestion that free will is an illusion, a very convincing illusion, but nonetheless, we can make any choice we want, but in the end, the choices that we make are the only ones that we really could have made. And then after that comes uh, the ma maturity, the so principles of wisdom and fortitude, and then the social principle, we are social creatures, we need each other. And then public speaking, reminder to use few words, 
deliberate words, carefully chosen words, and to never gossip. And then the temperance, the suggestion to be careful about uh, my consumption of all things. I wasn't very temperate last night. <laughs> wasn't very temperate last night. I had one too many beers and I stayed up too late. Uh, after temperance comes uh, oh the sub principles of temperance are suffering simplicity and apathy where we suffer when we deny ourselves extra, what we want the extra simple life is a temperate life and apathy is our ability to recognize what is outside of our control and truly exercise a deep temperance in, in not feeling engaged to it like I'm not being very temperate about the fact that I didn't have a meeting with the boss in my middle of my dreams. <laughs> Why did I do that? Why did I go over for, overboard? When I realized I don't actually have a boss, that it's a fictitious thing, I should just let that feeling go. That feeling of worry. I still feel it right now. It's echoing in my brain. Okay, after uh, that comes um, the best seat in the house. No. <laughs> Where did that come from? Uh, after temperance comes um, uh, the horror show. Reminder that life is full of awful, terrible things happening to everyone around us, including ourselves, if not now, coming for us soon. And then that which must be born, it's a principle called that. The things that we have to carry are the fact of the horror show and the responsibilities that we've taken upon ourselves in life to, as mature adults, as responsible adults, striving to be mature. And then the Feast of Ophel, which is the upset that we throw out into the world when we've had enough. And then um, and the consumption of said upset from others. And then two principles, distraction and agency and the great indifference. We spend our whole lives distracting ourselves with all the things we've got, our work, our job, our school, our play, our friends, our family, our sports, our hobbies, and our God. All so that we don't have to see we seem to be alone here in the universe, our species, the creatures on our planet. It's an awful uh, thing to apprehend, especially if we're not ready for the consequence of being on our own. Consequence and responsibility, that is. The next principle is the best seat in the house. No, yeah, do not want to be anyone else, be anywhere else or be doing anything else but to be okay with who I am, where I am, and what I'm doing. And then after the best seat in the house comes the path of wildness, which is a way to move forward and up and into a new life and through life into a new adventure. And then the risk of avoiding risk, the surface level risks, and the deep risk of uh, not attending to discovering who we are or making ourselves into something that we may be compelled to become or feel compelled to become from an early age. Don't know where that feeling comes from, but it's there for some of us. Most of us, I expect. <laughs> Even the ones that don't feel it, it may be there. Or don't claim to feel it, at least. Hmm. That's an interesting position, Kurt. Telling other people what they, that they may believe something, they may have something that they even say they don't. Why? I'm being awfully presumptuous in that. Okay, next is um, the path of wildness. And then next is the risk of avoiding risk, the surface level risks of life, you know, school, career, home, family, uh, security. And then the deep risk of spending time to discover ourselves, to find ourselves, so to speak. And then after that comes... Um, the risk of avoiding the sin, sin and damnation. There's, oh, the risk of avoiding risk, and then the risk is that you can't do both, right? Can you attend to the to the surface level stuff? Get a go to get a degree, go to get a get a good job, get a home, find a, someone to spend your life with, and make a family, um, build for security for the future, and still discover and uh, do something with uh, your own identity find you, attend to 
the interest of you. It's a tough thing to do both without appearing selfish or, or uh, shallow. Ah. But it can be done. We live long enough. You know, most of us can fit t- more than two lives, at least, at least more than one life in a single lifetime, so to speak. Okay, next is sin and damnation. There are seven sins in my world. These relate to believing things that are untrue, being untrue, and gossip. No, it, 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 you know, specifically, these are, excuse me, these are falsity, credulity, faith, superstition, dogma, authority, and gossip. The consequence of all of these is damnation in the here and now. Complete oblivion suggests that there is no, if there is no, we don't have a soul, nothing to escape our death or outlet or outlast us. Uh, if there is no God and no heaven or hell, then we're kind of on our own. And uh, when we're dead, that's going to be the utter, absolute end of us. So if we want to, uh, you know, resolve difficulties with others, do it in the here and now. Reunite with them. Reconnect with them. Uh, you know, work to overcome the, uh, what separates us. And never, ever, ever gossip. Don't talk about people behind their back. You, we all know when we're doing it. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, vicious indulgence and distraction. Next is um, the Great Life Adventure, one or more, like I said, experiences that help to help us to, if not find ourselves, to create our identity, mold ourselves into something that is more than our job and our home and our, our education and our family and our beliefs. But what more there is there? There's what comes of being you, of, of living you. And uh, next comes uh, the season of philosophy, a time to record what we learned along the way. Have the pen ready. The bullseye aim, striving for the mark, usually missing. I had a good talk with yesterday about that one with Yimiko. And then the uphill climb, drudge, drudge, drudge. And then arena and utility. Life is a forum for a venue for the exercise of our objectives towards the pursuit of our um, exercise of our principles in pursuit of our objectives. Our, uh, nothing is enough. Just a subtle reminder and a less than subtle reminder that uh, less is better. And then finally, the principle of fun. A reminder to enjoy the moment of now, but also take pleasure and remember to take pleasure in the app- app- apprehension of the future. The joyful apprehension of what's to come, and then the uh, uh, joyful recollection of what was in the past. And there, that's my good life creed. Now, for the day. Plan for this coming day. It's an easy day today, I think. Um, Watch out, sometimes those easy ones are the tricky ones. It's easy because I did a lot of the work that would have piled up today. I chose to work on Friday. Which it really wasn't extra. I was I was making up for some lost time because I had to go to the doctor on Thursday, and I got a lot of good work done. Caught up on just about everything. I've only got two emails, two meetings today, they're, and uh, they're both important. Um, and then I'm ready to do the day, and I'll stay focused, and I won't get distracted, and I'll do a good day, and I'll. Uh, in the, in the, at lunchtime, and then over in the evening when I walk the dogs, I'll do my reading, um, and then I'll make sure I go to bed on time tonight and oh, catch up again with my sleep. Anyway, that's the good life for today. Thanks for joining me. Be safe, but not too safe.